Hello and welcome back to Survival Saturday with Johnny Tiger. The date is Saturday, November 21st, 2020. One of the most common compliments I get from people who's watched me perform martial art, people who watched me fight, or people who's fought me, people who I train with, one of the most common compliments I get is, wow, Johnny is lightning quick. Now, of course, you got to take into consideration that uh, a lot of people are thinking he's lightning quick. He's so fast for a blind guy. Or just he's so fast for someone who's bulky. But either way, being able to be quick has always worked well for me. But interestingly enough, a lot of people who trained me, a lot of my trainers, my sensei, if you ask them, if you ask them, why is Johnny so quick? They will say, no, Johnny is not that quick. He, he's fast, but he's not uh, extraordinarily quick. So what's going on here? Well, today I'm going to tell you guys my secret. Because I'm actually not as quick as some people think. What I have is I understand how speed works. My understanding of how to get the most out of speed allow me to appear to be a lot faster than I am. When we talk about speed, there are some things to keep in mind, and we are going to go through them one at a time. It may seem a bit overwhelming at first, but if you watch this video several times, and maybe be able to take in a little bit at a time, it shouldn't take that long for things to make sense. First, there's the one principle to keep in mind when we talk about speed. Heck, when we talk about almost everything with regarding to self-defense, fighting, and martial art. The one principle to keep in mind is that action will always beat reaction. Now, this quote, obviously it's not 100% true, because action not it doesn't always beat reaction, but it happens often enough that I can tell you that action beats reaction maybe 98% of the time, unless you make a habit of fighting someone who is really, really slow, or who is just that much uh, lower than your level or your expertise. You're fighting someone really, really weak. If you fight someone as your equal, or as we like to say, when we train in self-defense, we always want to assume whoever we run into on the street is going to be better than we are. More trained, stronger, faster, heavier, have more friends, have better weapons, whatever. You run into someone like that, then action will always be reaction. And this is a very simple concept when we stop and think about it. When you are going off of reaction, when something is coming at your face, for example, as the person swings something at your face, your eyes, obviously not my eyes, but your eyes, pick up the information. Your eyes send the information to your brain. Your brain then consults the other part of your brain that stores 
store your knowledge on how to get out of something like that. How which way to go? Should we go down? Should we go to the side? Should we block? And then that part of your brain send it back to the first part of your brain. Okay, block. And then your brain send it back to your arm, and then your arm move. So eyes to brain, brain to other brain, other part of the brain, other part of brain send it back to this part of the brain. The brain send it down the arm, and the arm come up. That is how much work your your information center go through when you are going off of reaction. Action, on the other hand, is different. Action is from brain. Brain says, "Arm hit that person. Arm hit that person." One, two, brain, arm, brain, arm. That's fast. Okay, so. Action always beat reaction. Remember that when you are thinking about speed, when you are thinking about、uh, what you need to do to train your speed, how you have to do to be fast. Think about action, not reaction. There was a a very famous、um, interview or demonstration exhibition by Bruce Lee that's actually worthwhile looking at. While Bruce Lee was on stage with some very famous karate sensei, karate fighter, Bruce Lee said to them, "Okay, every one of you, I'm going to、uh, put my fist between your two hands. So you hold your hand open, and I have my fist between your two hands. And then when you see me start my punch, clap your hand together to trap my fist. Okay." I'm going to show you how fast I am, and you, none of you can stop my punch, even though you already know that I'm going to punch straight in. My hand is already between your hand. You still can't stop me. And indeed, he was right. No one could stop him. When I was little, I thought that was so amazing. I thought that wow, Bruce Lee is so fast. It's not until that I grew up that I realized. He did something that was so obvious that it made everyone think that he was fast. But all it was was action beat reaction. Let's look at our formula again. For these karate sensei, for these karate expert, they have their hands open. Bruce Lee's fist between their hand. At this point. Bruce Lee's fist is maybe six inches from their body. Okay, probably the equal distance between their hand and Bruce Lee's fist. But they have to wait for Bruce Lee to start the punch. Which means, the moment Bruce Lee starts to twitch, these karate fighters, their Eyes send the information to their brain. Oh, hey, he start. He's moving. The brain says, "Clap your hand together," and then send the information down to the arm, and then the arm moves together. So there's a one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. While for Bruce Lee, it was brain tell the hand now punch, and the hand punch. So it's a one, two, one, two. Okay, so one, two will always be. One two three four. Okay, it's simple as that. It got nothing to do with him being really fast. It's him being the one who dictates when to move. That made it work for him. Now, if Bruce Lee was to say, "Okay, I have my fist between your hand. Clap, please clap your hand together whenever you want, and I will try to hit you before your hands come together." I'll bet you, Bruce Lee wouldn't be able to succeed that many times, because now Bruce Lee would be the one who have to go off of reaction. So keeping that in mind, action beats reaction. No matter how fast you are, no matter how quick you are, you want to try to take 
the preempted way. You want to be the first one to move. You don't want to think, oh, I'm fast not to react, so I'm going to uh, wait for them to move. No, you're going to get hurt that way. It is also important to understand, I should have said this before the uh, principle, but anyway, it is also important to understand that speed is not always the same, okay? There are several, a lot of factors that come into speed. There's the velocity, how fast an item travels through the air, how fast my fist travels through the air. There's velocity, there's momentum, okay? If I throw a punch from dead, dead go, from a full stop to a full punch, versus me already moving my arm, me already moving my arm is going to be faster because I'm already moving. I have momentum in there. Uh, also, there's mass, there's mass. So a person who, let's say, let's say there's someone in front of me, arm's length away, and I throw a punch by using my arm, bam, okay? Man, that's fast, right? That's fast. But if I, rather than just use my arm, I actually use my leg. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, that's faster. You would think that it's slower to have to move my leg, my back, my body. But I have my mass behind it. So if I just use my arm, my arm muscle have to make my fist travel from my shoulder to the other person's face. So this means my arm muscle have to handle making my fist go uh, two feet, three feet of distance, okay? But if I engage the rest of my muscle and actually move forward, driving forward with my leg, then suddenly, my fist doesn't have that much farther to uh, that far to go because I'm already moving forward. Now the distance between me and him is not two feet or three feet, maybe only a foot and a half. Okay? So there's mass, there's a momentum, there's a velocity, and then there are, there's the uh, running speed versus twitch speed. Running speed is uh, very simple, you know, you, you look at the gazelle. Look at a cheetah. Things that can go a hundred miles a minute. Well, not that fast, but you get my meaning. When you tell them to run, they go really, really fast. Okay? That that's running speed. That's cool. But it's not all that useful in the fight. What really more useful in the fight is twitch speed. Only one motion, okay? But super fast. Look at a crocodile. When you look at a crocodile moving on dry land, they go super, super, super slow. They look like they can barely walk faster than a turtle. But if you get in range in front of them, suddenly, boom, they got you. They move super fast when they are ready to go, when they're ready to attack. They can go from zero to a hundred just for that one lunging forward motion. A lot of big guys are like that. So when you hear people say that big guys are easy to fight because they're slow, don't let that fool you. A big guy who trains is way scarier, especially when you are close enough for him to get a hold of you because his twitch speed is going to be super fast. On top of that, there's also reaction speed reflexes, all that stuff. So speed is not just one factor. Speed is several factors adding together to create that perfect combination, the perfect condition uh, for you to be nice and quick. Now, back to the things to pay attention to. We already talked about the principle. Action beat reaction. Now I'm going to show you guys three things that you can do to increase your speed. The three things is, just remember the 
letter T P P T P P T number one training training okay you can only fight the way you train you can only fight the way you train keep that in mind always remember that you train the way you want to fight you only fight the way you train which means now I have a lot of students that complain bitterly when we do punching uh, striking tumbles they say it's too fast it's too fast okay why can't we do a slow isn't it better to do slow and strong well no because if you don't train to speed up then when it actually comes the person is going to be able to see your punch coming before you can hit them so we got to train the way we want to fight so to enable your speed to bring that speed into your movement you need to do the right thing during training which means obviously if you are super super new then get your combination down one two three four five six okay everything be nice and compact nice and accurate okay work on your form work on your balance but don't fool yourself into thinking that's all you need to do okay eventually you want to be able to one two three 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 two one okay like that you need to be able to throw it out with a snap of a finger because that's how it's going to come out when you actually need to defend yourself okay so train the way you want to fight i'm going to show you guys some of the training that you can do to uh help you guys speed up one of the things is to train your fast twitch stop lifting weight okay stop lifting big heavy weight okay this is the time to train your fast motion if you keep lifting big heavy weight it will slow you down because your muscles are used to slow powerful motion slow powerful motion huh? so if you want to develop that fast speed hold back on your heavyweight training and start doing things like poses or spin or shadow boxing okay or jump punch uh, jump in the air and see how many punch you can throw in before you land on the ground or switch your stand while throwing punches so you throw your one two one two one two while switching your feet okay teach your body to twitch and the twitch will come to you when you actually need it I do a lot of things like that okay I do a lot of things like that to make me faster sometimes people around me said um, I move kind of sudden I always move like I, I, I'm ready to hit someone it is not that I'm ready to hit one but I am trying to incorporate my fighting my martial arts skill my martial arts motion speed into my everyday uh, movement my everyday day-to-day -day, uh, routine so if I'm sitting down and I need to get out to go into the door can I should I do it nice and slow careful so I don't trip over anything yeah sure but that doesn't help me to develop my speed so if I'm sitting here and someone ring the doorbell I'm going to out and go okay I don't need to move that fast but I'm going to do that to train my body to do that okay if I'm cooking something at the stove at the sink I need to turn and grab something out of the drawer should I should I can I just do a nice and slow walk over to the drawer 
open the drawer, get it out, shut the drawer. Yeah, sure. That's even more sensible. But because I am trying to train my body to always be ready to move fast, I'm going to do it obviously within safety allowance. I'm going to move over to the drawer, pull it open, reach in, take the item. Obviously, you want to be slow. Don't want to cut yourself on a knife. Shut the drawer and move back to the sink. Okay? Moving from the sink to the drawer. That part, move fast. Okay? In your mundane life, train yourself to suddenly move fast. Obviously, always keep safety in mind, right? Don't want to slip in the bathroom. Don't want to knock someone over with their elbow. But, I'll leave that to your judgment. Whenever you can, move fast just for the heck of it. Okay? Because this way, you'll be able to do it when you're under pressure. Also, another great thing to train to develop your speed is a form of juggling. This is why I have my flute in my hand. This is not Music Monday. Okay? First, by holding your flute or whatever you want to juggle, please don't do it with anything breakable or anything sharp, something nice and uh, safe, okay? Hold, I'm holding my flute in front of my face, and I'm going to open my hand, let it fall, and I'm going to grab it with the same hand before it hits the ground. Like that. Let go, grab. Let go, grab. Just like a bird snatching the prey out of midair. Let go, grab. Okay? When that gets easy, that is training your reflex, that is training your hand movement. When that gets easy, then we're going to give us more challenge. I'm going to let go and grab it again, but I'm not going to grab it from above. I'm going to let go and get my hand underneath it to grab it from underneath. Like this, let go, grab. And fumble and drop it, that's okay, that's okay. That's going to happen, right? Yeah. And then we just try again. Let go, grab. Let go, grab. Let go underneath, grab. Like that. Okay? Even someone like me who do this for years will fumble and drop it. That's okay. Because I'm not here to be a juggler. I'm here to develop my hand speed. I'm here to develop my muscle speed. Okay, once this gets easy, then we're going to add more challenge. This time, I'm going to grab it with my other hand. Okay, so my right hand holds the flute in front of my face. My left hand is in my pocket. Obviously, when you first start, then you want your left hand to be nearby. Okay, start easy. Left hand by your chest or near your face. So your right hand let go, your left hand grab it out of the air. Your right hand let go, your left hand grab it out of the air. Okay. And then, your right hand let go, your left hand going to grab it from underneath this time. Grab. Grab. Okay? And then, you make it a little bit tougher. You let go with your right hand, your left hand starts from your new pocket this time. So you have to pull it out of your pocket and grab. Right? Right hand let go, left hand grab. Okay? See how it went a lot lower this time? Because I have to add that pulling my hand from a pocket thing. But I'm still grabbing it, okay? This is how you train. This is a training part of your speed. Next, practice. That's really obvious. Practice makes perfect, okay? So if you want to be fast, practice, practice, practice. The same motion, the same punch. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Switching your stance. Left foot forward, right foot forward, left foot forward, right foot forward. Practice it. Okay, I'm not going to say you stay home and practice it a thousand times a day. But if you practice it 50 times, 100 times a day, a week, you practice it 700 times. Okay, a month, you're well over 2,000 times. Eventually, what this will do is your muscle and your brain start to take this for granted. This is 
called muscle memory. Okay? So when something comes up that requires you to throw that punch number one, okay, I can throw this out in my sleep. I don't need to be awake. Uh, my muscle, my arm doesn't have to consult my brain. Okay? It's like someone throw a, a, a move that requires me to throw number one or throw a high block. Uh, I no longer need to think. My, my, my brain is like, okay, arm, you know what to do. Just do what you think is right. So I'm cutting out that process where arm asks brain, brain asks the other side of the brain, other side of the brain send the information to this side of the brain, the brain send the information down to the arm. I'm cutting out that part by practicing, practicing, practicing until this is drilled into my muscle. So when I hold onto this flute and spin it, my left hand is already here to hold it and spin it again. I can keep doing this. I can talk and move this in a pattern. I don't have to stop and think. If someone suddenly come up behind me and try to hit me, I can turn around and get this into position without having to think. It works the same with sticks, knife, sword, whatever, right? So train, train the right move, do the right kind of training, and practice. Practice, practice, practice. Now what is the third P? What is the third one? P, P, P. Train, practice, plan. A plan is an internal work. This goes on in your head. Because you can't always just depend on speed. Before you move, have it in your head. Plan out what you are going to do. Okay? So, if I'm just sitting here, I'm going to get out fast. But if I don't plan it out, I'm going to trip or slip or whatever, right? But if I'm thinking in my head, when I'm ready to move, I'm going to pull my heel in toward my butt and then push with my leg and I'm going to be up. Then I already have that plan. So when I'm ready to move, I'm up. Boom, I'm up. Pull the heel in, push with the foot, push with the leg, and I'm up, right? So train the right thing, practice, 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 and plan what you're going to do. Okay. Next week, we are going to come back and talk about uh, the five don'ts, the five no-nos where speed is concerned. I was hoping to go through all of them today, but I realized this is going to get really long. So uh, we already talked a lot today about speed. I think this is enough for you guys to digest for a while. Um, just remember, speed is composed of many things. Reflex, reaction, running speed, twitch speed, mass, momentum. Okay, and a large, a large part of that is brain. Okay, how you plan it out, how you plan your movement. Okay, if you can plan, if you can move smartly, then you can appear to be super fast, even when you are not. Okay, and principle, action, speed, reaction. The three things to help you get faster, train, practice, and plan. Thank you for checking out today's Survival Saturday. We'll be back again tomorrow for Soul Search Sunday. For now, keep practicing and have a good night.